Right then. Here we are on another episode <coughs> of uh, Reese's Angling Adventures, if that's what you want to call them. A couple of rods out, Conti rod, and the super match. Today, we are fishing the River Medway. Slightly urban fishing, as you can see, it's built up all the way around the river. Um, if I can zoom in, and over there, that's Rochester, uh, Rochester Development Riverside, or Riverside Rochester Development, whatever it's called. Um, and they're building a lot, a lot of new houses over there, all the way up. There's another, there's another mark on the Medway, a lot of people like to fish the Blue Crane. Um, and it goes round, it's, it's like a prison barge or something. Um, and then Jackson's Field up there, and along New Road and around the river. So yeah, today we are fishing, just a little mark that I've known and a few other local lads know. And um, Yeah, I mean it's a bit snaggy down there. Target species today are bass, well, schoolies, eels, flounders, hopefully not a whiting. Um, but yeah, we've just set up, no bites yet, with my little brother, little brother T, say hello T. <laughs> You're right. Um, yeah, so that's T. Hopefully, you're all alright, he says. Um, yeah, tide's, uh, tide's on its way, and I think I was about half past seven, and it's now quarter past three, so we've got a few hours yet. <coughs> Baits are, as always, I've always got a crab. We've got to bring some crab. So, in there, we've got a few peelers from the fridge that are, that are slightly popping, ready to use. And in here, we have got some of the best ragworm that I can... I can possibly get hold of around here. They may be small, but they're beautiful, fresh hand dug from the River Medway, and I love them. I absolutely love them, and they're ideal. I'm only scratching today, so they don't need to be massive. Um, you can put a whole worm on nicely. So yeah, I've got a score of them. I've got a score of other ragworm. Um, that done the business for me last week. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen it in my other videos. We've got um, I fished at Paul Arbor last Saturday, um, and then on a Sunday we moved down and fished Brighton Marina. Um, yeah, that was good. Play some flounders we had, me and the missus. Um, so yeah, so the plan today is get a few fish. I don't think it's going to be a, a long video, but um, yeah, I'll show you the rigs and everything in a minute when I reel in, when I rebait up. I'll get my brother to do the filming, and uh, yeah, we go from there. All right, I'll bring you back. So just a quick one. <clears throat> just thought I'd let you all know this reel. It's a, uh, it's a just a. It's only a cheapy one. It's a Shakespeare. What is it? Shakespeare Agility. Shakespeare Agility LC eight thousand. I think it was about forty quid. And I'll tell you what. What a reel it is it's for, for no money at all. The line lay on it's lovely. All right, I'm, only, I'm, I'm using braid on that one. But, um, yeah, it's so smooth. The, the gear ratio is good. Um, what was the gear ratio? Yeah, 4 three, one. So it, it's a nice fast reel. Gets you in over the snags. Um, it, it's, it's a nice, it's got a nice chunky handle, something to grab hold of. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite into big reels. My multipliers are normally 5.25s because they're just fantastic. The old ones, not the new ones, because the new ones are crap in the nicest possible way. Um, but yeah, for a, for a cheap fixable reel, um, it does everything I need it to. As you saw, it was catching the place the other day. It had the flounder. Um, and hopefully, it'll have something here. But yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description. If anyone wants to have a look at it, you can uh, click the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, just have a look. I mean, for 40 quid, I don't think, I don't think you're going to get much better for 40 quid. Um, if there is better out there, if anyone wants to leave it in the comments and let me know, then Kushti. Because as I say, I've only had it a couple of months. Um, and if anything goes wrong with it, then I should be doing another video and telling you how crap it is. But at the moment, it's brilliant. I can't fault it at all. So yeah, anything thinks there's anything better out there for 40 quid, let me know. If not, click the link below and uh, have a look at it. Have a look for yourself. I'll bring you back. Yeah. 
Right, peeler crabs. Most of you have probably seen them before or heard about them. They can be very expensive in a tackle shop. My local tackle shop sell them for about 70, 75p each. Um, but I do know places that sell them for up to £1.20 each. Um, this one is an average size one of what I'll pick up. I mean, I pick up quite a few when they're peeling this time of year. Um, I sell a lot of mine to the tackle shops, local tackle shops around my area. Um, and a few friends and um, a few people that I know. I also freeze a load down, especially this year. It seems, I mean, we're 2019 now. They've been peeling for, where? what, what date are we? About the 12th of April, 13th of April. Um, and they've been peeling now for about a month. So they, that just seems to me this year, I've been doing this, I've been, been getting my own peelers now probably about eight years on and off. Um, so for me, when they're, when they're peeling, there's no better bait. There is for, for, for rounding for the southeast where I fish. There is no better bait. The flounders love them. The eels love them. The schooly bass and the, and the, the decent sized bass love them. Um, we get the rays on them, and then come the end of May. Well, mid May, end of May, the smooth hands turn up, and and yeah, I mean they go absolutely mad for them. But this year, to me, it seems they've peeled too early. No fish are taking them. They just don't seem interested in the peelers yet, and it's very very strange. So my theory is, may not be right, but my theory is that once he stopped peeling in the next couple of weeks, because it's not going to be long, the fish are then going to turn on. Um, obviously there'll still be peelers, there'll still be a few about, but I mean at the minute I can go out and pick up 300 tide. But, <clears throat> on a good tide. But it's going to get down to the nitty gritty when you're going out and you're working hard for two hours and you're only picking up 30 crab. That's when it's going to be when the crabs are going to start. So I'm thinking that having a good stack of peeler in the freezer um, is the way forward. With the hounds, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, hardbacks are just as good. In my opinion, they're not. If you fish in the south coast, off offshore, like Selsey, even on the beach at Selsey, Bracklesham, all down that way, yes, the hounds will take some, will, will, the hounds will take the hardbacks. Um, because, I, I'm not sure why they're, because to be fair, I'm not sure. I think it's probably because there's so many there, it's absolutely plagued them down there. They're, they're just, they're, there might be 10 fish for one crab. Um, but up here, I know people still use the hardbacks and, and people will say no, uh, hardbacks are good enough but around the south east coast and out in the Thames Estuary, peeler is key. Um, the plan is when these fresh crab run out and I'm just using my frozen, I'll be using a frozen crab or half a frozen crab with a live green hardback. Um, I'll have the movement and the smell then um, and I think it's start killing two birds with one stone. I think hopefully it shouldn't fail. Anyway, enough about that. I'm going to show you a pill one. So this crab, he's, 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 I mean, he's still alive, but he's semi-dormant. Um, if you don't like things like this, then, then maybe look away now. But this is how it happens. So the legs come off with the sockets. Give them a little twist. All the legs come off. Now you can keep those and peel them. They're good for tipping. Um, all that, I'll show you, I'll show you that peel of leg in a minute. So anyway, all the legs. And the claws, just quickly. You see that there, where well, that's just cracking, that shell, the old shell. You, you want them like that so you can feel them and there's, there's, a bit of a, there's a bit of a squeeze there, if you like. And then you know it's ready to peel. So the two sides off. Then these little bits. When I'm fishing on the river, for the eels and the flounders, I like to take off every hard bit I can. Um, just, it's just the way I've always done it and it works for me, normally. Uh -huh. There's no fish at the moment, but <laughs> anyway. So all the, all the hard bit, all the bottom shell, and then the flap as I call it, it's probably a proper name, but I don't know it. So the flat wall comes off. Then the top shell. Leaving the nice soft, it's all soft. There's a couple of sockets on there. Now, I don't mind them because they will give my hook a good hold. But there is more hard bits. If you feel the top of the crab, you'll feel lumps once you've peeled it. You'll feel lumps on the inside. So you just want to lift that. You see the lungs, some people call them dead man's fingers. And underneath that, there's like a plate, a hard plate. So I pull that off and I take the, I take the lungs out, or dead man's fingers. They've been known to be called. Um, now, this is probably a bit overkill, probably don't need to do it, but it's something I've always done, so I'll, I'll do what works for me. So that is that. There's your crab, fully soft, lovely. There's also actually one more little bit in there, just below the eyes. One more little hard bit there. See that? I don't know if it's his jaw or, or whatever it is. So that is 
a peeler crab, fully peeled. So we'll just drop that down there. <clears throat> just gold one of the legs. Now the legs are in sections, as I like to say. So the first section will pull off, showing you the, the nice new leg underneath. Then another one. You have to be a bit careful because they do pull apart, the legs. So just take it easy. And then pull that, that bit off, and then you're left with the last big bit. Now I like to get that between my fingers and just, just crack it. And there you have a nice new leg. Now it doesn't look much, and it's not much to be fair, but if you peel two or three of them and just stick them on the end of the hook, just as tipping, just gives it a, a much better look for the bait. Um, so what I'm going to do now, that is peeled. As you can see, the rods are still out. Um, but I'm going to be reeling in in the next couple of minutes, and then I'll show you how I bait up that crab. So, as you've just seen, the preparing of a peeler crab, and then I'm going to show you how I bait one up. Um, this is on a these are the rigs we're using, they're just one up, one down, it's made by myself. They're pretty easy to make. I'll get these little swivels, they're already on crimps. You just crimp them on, no beads, no knots, it's just simple. To be fair, oh, I haven't got crimp at all, I just use my teeth and bite them. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, probably buy a crimp at all, a pair of pliers. So one below the weight and one above, so one up, one down. Or uh, it's just like a two-up flapper, to be fair. Connected with a little clip at the top, a swivel at the top with a, with a clip that's on the main line. And then uh, that's a breakaway fast link because I think they're the best best links you can buy to be fair. Um, and now normally I use these fast links on my main line, but because of this continental rod, it's only got the tiny tip eye, you can't you can't really do it. Lead, just a four ounce or one one twenty five gram um, blue top breakaway impact lead, which again I, I, I love the leads because they're wires are nice and strong. Um, normally when I'm fishing for fishing light, I don't like to use um, impact leads or or grapplers if you like. I like a bit of movement, but when you're fishing the river like this, the tide comes in, you get you get a decent bit of tide run to be fair. Um, I'm only fishing short today, but still, you still get a decent bit of tide run. On the way in, on, on the uh, on the flood, you get a bit of decent tide run, and then when it when it hits high water and turns and, and hits the ebb, it, it goes out like a steam train. It really, I don't personally fish the river on the way out, unless I'm fishing a bit further around the corner at Upner, um, when you're fishing over low tide, if we ever see any codling in the river, which years ago we did. We, we used to see quite a few here to be fair, but the last two years we haven't seen any. Um, we still get the odd nice bass in the river. A couple of lads I know that live local, they fish on the other side by the Blue Crane, they do quite well over there. Uh, but anyway, back to the baiting up. <clears throat> so I've been using just ragworm on this and the crab's been on the other one. But I've got a problem, <laughs> believe it or not, with crabs. Now, I'm going on the assumption that crab don't eat crab, which is a lie, because they 100% do. But, let's get these. I'm going to stick a ragworm again on the top. Carry on with that on the top hook. The problem we're going to have, because the crabs are now peeling, and the ones that have peeled, and uh, they've gone hard again, where they, when crabs are peelers, they don't eat. So, they're starving, basically. As soon as they've peeled, and they've got out of their old shell and they've gone back into their new shell, they're, um, they're looking for food. So in the river, it becomes, for the next month and a half, two months, it becomes an absolute nightmare to fish because you're just crabbed out everywhere you go. Um, they are stripping baits within minutes. So the only really way to fish it is fish up, fish it with pop-up rigs, which I haven't really got any made up yet because it's a bit, <laughs> it's too early in the year again. Or what I would like to say is too early in the year. Right, so there's a ragworm. I'm not bothering with the towel because the crab's going to come and bite it off straight away. Right, so, just take that bit of old ragworm off. Um, where is that bit of rag, that bit of crab that I had prepared? There it is. Oh, a bit like Blue Peter. This is half the crab that I prepared for you just a minute ago. T's got the other half of it on, on one of his rigs. So, the way I'll do it, as you can see, I've just cut him straight up the middle. So there's, there's all the goodness, there's everything you want, and there's the legs. So there's there's the back leg socket right there. So I'll put my hook in there. This is just the way I do it. It's not the way to do it, it's the way I do it. So I'll do that, put that in there, and then just sink the hook into that little bit there. Bait elastic, bait elastic. Now, normally I would be using my boat binder, because these are fantastic bits of kit. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute, but I've run out of bait elastic. Uh, refills for them, so I need to order some more. So, a little bit of elastic 
as you do because the crab is very soft if you don't use elastic chances are it's going to come off in cast so not too much more, again my preference but not too much because I just I don't like using too much not on these little baits just a little bit make sure you go around the eye of the hook that holds it on and there's your there's your bait yeah, nice and gooey but again a lovely little bait for a flounder a bass or an eel um, or whatever else may be lurking but other than that there might be a couple of pouting well I'll just quickly show you as I said I'll peel a couple of legs quick if I can do it you can't really do it quick because you'll end up pulling them apart and the thing is you want to leave leave peeling the legs until the last minute because they dry out very quickly even in a cool bag like the cool bag I've got I mean that won't last 30 seconds in this sun so today we've got an easterly wind blowing I wouldn't I wouldn't normally be fishing the river. Um, I used to fish it a lot as a kid. It's where I caught my first ever fish. Just round the corner at some pier um, on an old bamboo rod my granddad bought me from a, uh, from the boot fair. Uh, and an old Shakespeare reel. It's, and there was an old man down there. He set up a free up, three way swivel for me. Just a lead coming off of one side and a, and a hook coming off the other side. And I caught my first two white in. So yeah, and after that was hooked, as they say. Right, anyway, legs. Through that top part of that leg. You can see that. Through there, in there. There's one, and then the other one, do exactly the same thing. I don't bother banding these on. If they come off, they come off. But there you go. So now you've got a nicely presented bait. You've got something to dangle, something to move. So that is that. And then, uh, yeah, that's that. Right, let me get this back out. If you want to stand up, come with us. Nah. Really is no need to cast bar on this river. Um, sort of halfway is enough. So I'm going to just try and stick it just a little bit shorter than halfway, just to try and stay out of too much tide run, but enough to try and get some of the crabs off of my bait. Nothing I mentioned. It's pretty self explanatory. Just set this, two seconds. But if you are fishing a river, it's alright if there's no one else around with you. But if you are fishing a river, work out what way the tide's going. I mean, I know that way up the river, that is the exit to the river, that takes you out into the Thames Estuary when you follow it all around through Chatham and, and Rochester and, and, and Gillingham and all that. So that way is that river, if you like. So the tide is coming from the estuary, so it's coming from that direction, which means as we are now, it's moving from left to right. So if it's coming in, it's moving from the left. So when you cast, think about where you want your lead to end up. You want it to end up in front of you. So maybe just allow yourself to cast a little bit to the left. So as it hits the water, by the time it sinks and gets held in, you've got a little bit of time for it to move around and it will settle down in front of you. If you cast directly out in front, now when the tide's running you can end up down there and if there's other people fishing you'll end up crossing lines and yeah it gets on people's nerves all right it happens everywhere um and if you're fishing next to a, a nice enough person it'll be all right sorry mate it won't happen again and end of but some people do get a bit irate it's a bit pathetic really but it happens to the best of us so yeah just one to remember a little tip um yeah that is that you've seen the crab you've seen the way we bait it up you've seen the way we prepare it now you just want to see a fish and believe me so do i but I will bring you back if I get one. Cheers. Right then. So I've brought you back. <laughs> Fishless. Lovely afternoon. It's nice around this side of the river because uh, it's blowing easterly at the minute. So where we are, we've got this nice big building. Um, a plant. <coughs> Blocking us from the wind. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I take you out here, you probably you can probably hear the wind blowing through so here it's quite chilly over here where we're fishing it's lovely anyway so <clears throat> the session's been a blank we're both on the last chuck now um i've been trying to fish quite short most of the day with the odd occasional one just chucking it out a little bit further um i've just clipped the crab down on the pulley dropper and hit it as hard as I can. Um, it's just to see if there's anything that little bit further out. But to be fair, the further you cast, the closer you get to the other side of the river. So it's, it makes no difference really. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's been an hard session. No fish. I opted for the river today instead of going after the flat dogfish, aka um, formback rays, around on the island or or along or along the Fanic coast because of the easterly. It's blowing north easterly today, more east than north, and it it just makes it rough and horrible around that side of the around that side of the country. So we opted for the river. It failed. I've got a mate that's fishing over on the island of Isle of Sheppey somewhere, and he's had five rays so far. So yeah, we we definitely, definitely, definitely took a wrong turn today. But it's nice to fish somewhere different, somewhere quiet. We're out of the weather. It's nice and warm. As you can see, it's lovely and sunny. Got a bit of cloud coming from that direction, but we'll be long gone before that gets to us. Um, what I will do, as you haven't seen any fish, is um, I'm going to put up some pictures at the end of the video of previous fish I've caught over the years um, from the River Medway. Um, there's bass, flounders, eels, obviously whiting, but we all know what a whiting looks like, so I won't be putting a picture of that up. Um, yeah, and whatever else, whatever else I can find in the pictures that I've got. Uh, next fishing session will be probably over the Easter bank holiday weekend. We'd like to try and get out on the boat, um, but if not, then I think a trip down the south coast again, maybe Brighton again. Um, or or somewhere else. I'm not sure. Not sure exactly yet what's happening. I'm not sure what I'm doing with work. So yeah, next video will be hopefully the bank holiday weekend. So going over a couple of things we talked about. Obviously the crab. You see how we do that. Uh, the reel, the old Shakespeare reel, which again there'll be a link below in the description, <clears throat> so you can have a little look at that yourself if you if you maybe fancy one. Now obviously I don't work for Shakespeare. I'm not trying to sell Shakespeare reels, but I'm just helping you lot out. It's um, for the money. I think I don't think it can be beaten. So uh, yeah, um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe the video. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I think I'm I'm at about seventy, so I'm not quite not quite as good as some of the other uh, fishing channels. But yeah, no, it'd be nice to get a few more. It gives me something to sort of uh, to do it for. If you know what I mean, it's it's nice when you know you've got people watching and and liking the videos. So uh, until next time, cheers.